Pro playmakers, these are the skills that separate. So what we're talking about with this player here is trying to figure out ways in which he can learn to take his best asset, which is his ability to pressure the puck all over the ice. And he gets a lot of loose pucks, and he's got great anticipation to jump on loose pucks, and he's on the, in the play all the time with balancing offensive thought. So offensive thought, of course, is learning to jump into a hole, learning to create space for somebody else, learning to do those, those types of things, the subtle movements that create space, create time, allow play to develop, poise, patience, and then we jump and make a play. Those two things, become being a pressure type guy and also being having offensive thought is really, really a tough balance. And in this kid's situation, we have a young hockey player who is now very successful because he's able to jump on all these loose pucks. We hunts the puck around all over knowing that there's going to be lots of loose pucks to jump on and if he pressures the puck right he's going to be able to get a lot of puck touches. The problem is is that when the older you get the less of those type of pucks are out there. To be able to get into all open spaces with timing. Right now it's a weakness in your game. I think if you got better at it, you'd get a lot more pucks. But right now it's just hunt down loose pucks, loose pucks, loose pucks, loose pucks, loose pucks. When the better level in the court, the less loose pucks are. At. So you gotta find an angle and timing, like get there at the right time with speed. You gotta hit the hole, get the ball, and get right out of the hole. Right? Right now. What we want to be able to do is we want to start now with this player and start to get him to understand what offensive thought is and try to get a better balance between the two. I don't want to take that pressure part out of his game, but I don't want to be I don't want to just typecast him that he's just a checker. He's going to be your prototypical third line guy who's going to play penalty kill and he's going to hunt the puck all over the ice and force people into turnovers and maybe make a few plays. He plays defense. And all his pucks come from defense. He's going to turn into a checker. He doesn't think it offensively well enough. He's got to move. Like right here, he's going to find it. He's got to hide. He never gets a puck off of a nice pass. It's always a situation like this. See? He's real good and stuff like that. That situation is really good. But he's not good at reading offensively where to go to get pass. He can't play with anybody good. Okay? Yeah, it's all it's all about just trying to lose pucks. I'm I don't want that for this kid. What I want him to do is learn how to balance the pressure with the offensive thought. So I'm gonna show you what we've done with him in the first four weeks of the league. Just to show exactly the types of things that you can do when you don't limit a kid from a, from a role perspective. When they're young, it's, you got to be very cautious what labels and rules you put on these kids. We want to be able to expand their skill base, take some of their things that come easy to them and expand on those, like in this kid's situation is pressure thing, but not limit him in that way. What we want to do is expand it, add pieces to his game so we don't know where he's going to end up. We don't know how tall he's going to be. We don't know how big he's going to get. We don't know how aggressive or tough he's going to be. We don't know all those sorts of things. We don't know how skilled he's going to get, how patient he's going to be. We don't know that. So what we got to do is establish a skill base. So we're going to take you through four weeks. Got to be more patient, okay? When he has a puck here, get set up. When he has a puck here, I'm going to time it. So I can jump through here. Yeah! Oh! On this side, on this side. So I gotta time it so I can get through, and as I come through, I'm gonna time it to get it right here. Boom. Or, as Ray moves, I'm gonna time it so I can catch it last. Yeah. Right through there. Right? Gotta work on that timing. Don't turn your back on it. Keep your eyes on it. Let's go.
you're standing in the hall. Stay on here. Up here, like this. Now we're in front of the park in the hall. Right like that. Right. In his first week, he was able to create 46 plays. He had 26 passes, and he created 11 shot attempts. In the second, in, in the fourth week, he had 49, pa 49 plays, 30 passes, and 15 shot attempts created. So he's a plus player in each, in each thing. And what we've done is we've created, in here, we've created development that allows him to make that shift. And then we're going to talk about what he's done with his line mates here in a second. But this is where he was at first. And you can see the re relationship between this number and this number is very low. Okay? So he, he doesn't, even though he has all these plays, he, doesn't, he wasn't making a lot of plays, wasn't making a lot of passes. And then, of course, this, this number here is not as big as it should be. So what do we got to do? What we have to do is establish offensive reads. So he needs to know what are offensive reads and what are defensive reads. Because right now, he reads the game exclusively on the defensive side of the puck. He waits, 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 watches, and then he jumps to try to pressure somebody or jumps on a loose puck. We want him to read the game as well offensively. So when our team has the puck, then he is trying to figure out a way in which he can get into a hole, to be a threat, to create space, to create time, to be a passing option. That part of the game, he's not. it doesn't come as easy to him because he's so used to running around. And that's a function of a variety of different things. Biggest thing, though, is anticipating holes. Either holes that he can skate through or holes that the puck can get passed through. That's the thing. And, and, and this is the biggest issue from, from, a, from a mindset perspective and being able to read those offensive reads. So we gave him basically two offensive reads that we thought were important and we pounded those for the first couple weeks and we've seen a huge uh, huge improvement in, in his game to in his offensive game part is offensive timing so it's one thing to anticipate the hole it's another thing to get there at the right time and with speed so what I want him to be able to do is change speeds to get in the hole because if you change speeds to get in the hole it lets me know that you're anxious to get in there in the sense of when that timing is going to be it, it speaks to your timing if you just kind of mosey on into the hole or you're the same speed throughout that's not really reading the hole and anticipating anticipating means you can just see the two space open up and then you dive through and that's that's what we're after so we want anytime we see this type of thing that tells us that the player is reading the game offensively with the puck what we need to do is take him because with the puck he's basically a shark he gets it and he's going shortest distance to the net he's got great puck protection skills He's, he's very strong on it. He, he's got a, a, a huge desire to get pucks to the net. So this guy is looking for the quickest way, the shortest line. That's not offensive. I mean, there's times when you can be quick and you can be speedy, but other times you need to have poise, patience, and be able to manipulate the play. He doesn't have that other side and hasn't shown that to this point, but now we're starting to see evidence, as you can see throughout, that he's starting to build these pieces in. Really proud of the way that he's been able to do this part with the puck. Tougher is without the puck. Without the puck, in order to think offensively, you're going to move uh, to take back some ice. Uh, again, you're going to burst into, into holes. Those are reflections of things. You're going to go away from the puck to come back to it, to open up and elongate passing lanes. 
elongate time in which a passer could give you the puck, those types of things. The other thing we want him to do is manage risk. Well, now you'll see one of the things that he'll do is because he's looking for the shortest line, if he gets ahead of the play with the puck, he's not waiting for these guys back here. He's just going to go one on two, one on three, and try to bully his way through. And that's a high risk situation. We don't want that. We want him to get in, read when he's outmanned, outnumbered, and play more of a game of percentages because that is offensive thought. That's three times now you've gone one against three. You can't do that. What's going to happen is one guy's going to play you on the outside and force you to come inside. When you come inside, the guy on the inside is going to step up and take your head right off your shoulders. What you need to do is buy time. So when you get the puck here in the neutral zone, instead of going all the way down, you're going to buy time. You're going to come across the line, you're going to post up, let somebody slice through, and then we're going to attack. Instead of going one on three, give him the puck. And then you see him in the last game that we just played on Sunday, the fourth game, you see him come over the line, he knows he's one, he knows he's one on two, he creates it, moves to the other side of the ice, and then he hits the, the defenseman with the puck. It was brilliant. But that's what we want them to do, is learn to manage risk. The other thing that we need him to do is, this kid is on the puck a lot. He gets a ton of puck touches in the game, and he can be much more of an impact player. He doesn't need to be always pressure, pressure, pressure. He needs to learn to, uh, to have offensive thought. And the other thing that he needs to do is be able to influence the play of his... Of his Classic shift, exactly what I'm talking about. How many times did you catch a pass from a teammate in that shift on me? No. All the cuts you got, you had to hunt down and think to try to, you know, there was one play, you had finished up in a pass from the other guy. That's all, everything's coming from defense, which is fine. The problem is, you're not thinking it offensively and getting in the hole to catch passes. No, Cicero, you're outside the one time, the guy's got the puck on the wall, and you're up here. We're going to give you the puck here. Where are you supposed to be going? Jump it. Now you jump, you're going to get that pass. You're not putting the puck because you don't jump in the hole to get it. You wait, and then you play defense to get the puck. So all your puck touches come like that, and I'm worried. I want you to be much, so if I keep that defensive stuff, which I love, and then add this now offensive piece, really, really, really good. But I'm worried you're too much on this side. You gotta get that other side home. Don't blame anybody else, okay? It's you. You gotta be better. His line mates. So, in the first game, his line mates had 17 touches and 17 plays and 16 plays. So he had 46 in the first game, and these guys had 17 and 16. His passes, he had 26. These guys had three and four. So this is what his argument is. His argument is, hey, these guys don't pass the puck, so I'm just going to take it anyways. And that's the wrong argument. He needs to raise the group. He, need, he wants to be a good player. If he wants to be a good player, he needs to influence the play of his teammates. If he wants to be a great player, he has to lift the play of his teammates. And that's what he's learning to do. Scoring chances, he had 11, and his, and his line mates had 4-4 four and four in the first game. Now, when you look at the last week, which is just this week, after we've done this training and this development over the last little while, you can see his puck touches jump up to 49. So he gets a few more touches. He gets a few more passes in there. The ratio between passes and plays is much higher. And his shot attempts created is also much higher. So he's up. That's not the most impressive part. The most impressive part is the play now of his teammates. So his line mates are up, he's up three, his line mates are up five and eight for a grand total of 16. So in, the, in the, the difference between week one and week four, his line is made 16 more plays. Passing, 
They've made 11 more passes collectively. And shot attempts created, they generated six more scoring chances a, a game. This is in large part because of the new type of play of offensive thought that Alex is now bringing into the game. That's the reason why. He is starting to lift and influence the game of his, of his line mates and ha make them into better players and get them to learn how to play with him. If they constantly just see him pressure, 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 it takes, it, it takes the pressure off them to have to pressure the puck. Because he's there, I just slide in behind. Oh, he's over there, I just slide in behind. When am I ever first? I'm not. He's got to learn to think and rotate and challenge his line mates to be, become pressure players with him so that he can take takes the pressure off him to do that and then that allows him to be more thinking the game so that he can create more offense. Same when they have the puck. When they have the puck, instead of his line mate just knows, well, oh, this guy, he's going to get it shortest distance. I'm going to go to the net for garbage goals. That's not how we want him to play. We want him to give the puck, jump in a hole, get it back, break defenses down, learn how to manipulate people, and make plays.